Leatherberry saddled his first winner in 1959. And throughout the 60s, he showed kind of slow and steady growth in terms of, of uh, wins. And by the late 60s, he was winning upwards of 150 races a year. My father, being an owner, had some cheap horses. And so I would be introduced to the game by him taking me to the races. And then I studied more and more about it and read about it. And then when I went in the Army for two years, I come and took me away. I was stationed nowhere close to any racetracks down in Alabama and Georgia and all these southern states. So it kind of built up my desire to get back on the track, so to speak. He plied his craft in remarkable ways without ever being at the barn. In, in the very way that, that hands-on horsemanship requires a great deal of skill, so does hands-off horsemanship, and he's proven it. Well, I mean, I paid my dues early in my first 20 years, probably. I was there daybreak till, till everything closed down at night. He had done the horse training thing as scripted for a long, long time. I mean, he would hobnob with other trainers and tell horse racing tales because he can tell them with the best of them. And it made for good appearances. But in his mind, an exercise rider could tell how a horse was going tactically much better than he could see from a distance. I believe in Kane, you know, and he, he gave me the shot to do, you know, do what I love. He's so patient with everything and I never see him get angry at all. Things don't happen overnight, as he always said. Every, every owner I've had has uh, supplied me with it, and that's what trainer is not a trainer if he doesn't have to supply horses. Uh, every owner I've ever had and has helped me, that's all. To me, the most interesting thing is his depth as a person. I mean, it's, it's so easy to become spellbound with all he's accomplished, 6,400 wins, and just his sort of iconoclastic way of training horses. But this is a guy who, when his friends started turning 50, started giving them walking sticks, canes as gifts, sort of gag gifts. and. It's so flourished that they return the favor in kind every time he had a birthday. And he now has a collection of more than 200 of them. He writes poetry. He does carpentry. The man is just a, uh, is just a fount of storytelling and riddles and quips. And, and he's, uh, he's just fun to be around. It was a guy who walks into the uh, 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 confession booth in church. He goes in a confession booth and uh, and he says, Father, last night I spent a night in a, in a room with two 18-year-old girls and I'm telling you the things we did. He said, hold it, hold it. He said, first off, are you Catholic? I said, no. He said, what are you telling me for? He said, I'm telling everybody. <laughs>